to AWS reInvent. I'm Cassidy Quinn with GeekWire Studios. So excited that now we have threat researcher Sander Vinberg from F5. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So obviously your threat intelligence team dives into all kinds of threats that could be coming against customers. One big one is credential stuffing. So can you give us an example of how credential stuffing can be a threat to organizations? Yeah, so, so a credential stuffing attack starts when attackers steal credentials from one site, and then they know that we all tend to reuse the same password across multiple sites. What? Right, so, so what they do is they will just fire off tons and tons of attempts using passwords that they've gotten from other sites to try to log into our accounts. And uh, so the, the things they can do once they do that, it kind of depends on what kind of site they're logging into. If they log into a bank, they can transfer funds out. Uh, if they log into your social media, they can take it over and then they can use it for disinformation, right? So I think the, the most important thing to think about is, is that they're sort of coming through the front door and they're able to do anything you could do as a regular user, but a lot of that is stuff that you don't want them to do, right? So they can steal money, they can, especially if they compromise an account that you use to log into other accounts, then they can reset passwords and compromise everything you got. So really, there's a, it depends on the creativity of the attacker, but there's a lot that they can do once they have a successful login. Yeah, wow, so how can F5 help? What can organizations do to try to combat this? Well, what we found is you can, you can sort of separate out attackers by how good a job they're doing at pretending to be legitimate human traffic. Because the only thing, the only way that this makes sense is if they're using bots to scale it up, right? Because if, if you had an attacker just typing in passwords one at a time, they're never going to make any money. So what they're doing is they're using bots, but then they have to make those bots look realistic, like a realistic human user. And so you can sort of separate out those attackers that have the ability to do that and look realistic from the ones that, that don't really have that. So, when it comes to fighting those unsophisticated attackers, you can do a lot just with server logs, right? So there was one thing where we found somebody trying to log into uh, 187,000 different accounts in a week using one IP address. It's pretty easy to spot if you're looking for it, right? But then there's all this advanced stuff, and those folks, you can't catch those just by looking at server logs. So you actually need to collect signals from the client itself, right? They're going to be telling you I look like a browser, here's my realistic mouse movements, here's all this stuff, and so if you can send them a bunch of challenges on the client side, the client doesn't lie as much as the traffic will lie, right? So anything you can do to collect those client side signals, which is something that F5 is actually really good at, will help you unmask those advanced attackers much better. Wow, yeah, like you've been speaking to cyber attackers, they're figuring out ways to get around the things that we thought we had figured out, right? Multi-factor authentication, Oh, of course, I have that turned on, it's going to be safe. Yeah. Maybe not so much, what's going on with that? What can we do there? Well, what we've seen over the last couple of years, attackers have come up with a lot of different ways to get past most kinds of MFA. And if you think about it, it's not super surprising because folks like me have been telling everybody to use MFA for years, right? So of course attackers are going to focus on that. And uh, what, what we found is most of the MFA bypass techniques we see are either through phishing, uh, through the use of malware or through social engineering in a couple of edge cases. And the short answer is that there are, there are new authentication techniques. Some of them are MFA techniques. Some of them are just regular authentication techniques that use public key cryptography to avoid sending anything sensitive over the wire. So they're actually uh, kind of using a similar approach to web encryption, like TLS, uh, but they're using that for authentication, and that is so much more secure. It's resistant to almost all of the bypass techniques that we've seen. So the, the, the drum that we're banging on right now is, is, at this point, I wouldn't recommend anybody to implement a traditional MFA like with a, with a six-digit code. The six-digit codes are cooked. But these, the, the passwordless authentication, any of these MFA techniques that are using um, the FIDO2 or the WebAuthn protocol will go a long way towards mitigating that risk. Wow, yeah, thank you for explaining all that. So in your research around identity threats, what surprised you the most? You know, I was, I was surprised to find out it's a much more active battlefield than it seems like, right? You, 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 I, I did not realize how much attackers, especially the advanced attackers, were coming up with new, new tricks all the time. And we are constantly developing new countermeasures, new rules, just based on things that we observe. So I would say maybe 85, 90% of the traffic is stuff we see day in, day out. It's our bread and butter. But 
all the time. We're constantly observing new novel techniques that Jackers are coming up with. And it's, it's, it's just so much more of an active sort of fight than I thought before I really dug into the data and talked with the experts. Yeah, wow. Well, thank you for being active in that fight. And thank you for joining us today, yeah. Sander with F5. Thank you so much for joining us here at AWS reInvent with GeekWire Studios. Thank you.